Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 16th lecture of the MOOC course on Sociological Perspectives on Modernity. In the last lecture, we started the Western Marxist theoretical trajectory of, of modernity, I mean how society as a human creation was discussed and within Western Marxist tradition. Okay? We started the discussion on the works of Lukács, Gramsci and Turin and again the works of Lukács, Gramsci and Turin must be located against the backdrop of four central philosophical and political foundations of critical modernist paradigm in sociology, namely holism or totality, reflexivity, rationality and social movements. Okay? We have already discussed in the concept of totality or holism, I mean the, the similarities and differences between structuralism on the one hand and western Marxism on the other. Okay? Then we have also discussed uh, uh, reification and alienation, I mean how for western Marxist authors, okay, how society is a human creation more exactly humanity is social humanity, I mean the way Marx posed this uh, the, his argument that human beings make their own history, human beings make their own history, but they do not make it under circumstances chosen by themselves. That is why human beings only appear as human beings in interaction with one another, that is in social relations. Okay? Even Rousseau also said this in social contract theory. Okay. And these social relations are not fixed and given, but they are very much dynamic in nature, they are not static. That would enable us to discuss them in terms of structures which define what appear to be individuals, rather they are the results of collective creation and social conflict. In this context, we have discussed the process of reification. I mean whatever appears to as natural given or fixed in society is the result of human action, but we do not recognize it as such. We think that it is natural, something is natural, something is given, something is fixed, but actually it is not natural, it is not given, it is not fixed. That is why Lukács introduces this ter the term reification which refers to the process where the result of our actions appears to us as a, as a quasi natural thing, semi natural thing, partially natural thing, because we do not recognize its social origins or the process of creation that goes into its formation. Okay? We have discussed this, I mean in western Marxism then what appear as structures are simply the products of human action, human agency, human labor or even more simply a form of human action that, that has taken on a life of its own and what uh, and now appears partially natural, quasi natural. Okay? We have discussed this and in this context we have also discussed expressive totality, I mean to, to characterize uh, the view of society is that of expressive totality, I mean the social whole, the totality is seen simply as the self expression of the social subject, not only self expression, but also self creation of, uh, of the social subject which we only partially recognize as such. Okay? In the context of totality or holism, we have discussed this. Now, let us come to, to, to uh, a point where we can discuss western Marxist theoretical and intellectual trajectory of modernity through the lenses of social movements, uh, reflexivity and, and rationality. 
Okay. Within social movements, we are going to discuss um, consciousness and action, I mean class consciousness and action, I mean human agency, class agency and class conflicts or class struggles, class consciousness and class organization, I mean hegemony, knowledge and action and so on. And in, in reflexivity and rationality, we are going to discuss self creation, self knowledge and modernity, I mean historicity, I mean how to, how to engage with uh, and still interrogate um, absolute historicism. Okay. Now, let us start with the western Marxist tradition of modernity okay, through the lens of social movements. I mean class, uh, I mean consciousness and action, I mean human agency, class agency and class conflict. Just like Marx, western Marxism recognizes that an abstract description of the subject of this process of the expressive creation of society as being simply humanity would be both ahistorical as well as metaphysical. What is this ahistorical? I mean in this, when I say ahistorical, I mean in the sense of not recognizing the changing nature of this process over time and across space, I mean which, which goes beyond history, ahistorical, which goes beyond time and space, ahistorical. Okay? When I say ahistorical, I mean which goes beyond time, which goes beyond space. Okay? In this sense, Lukacs, Gramsci, Alan Turing, I mean the whole lot of western Marxists, they recognize that an abstract description of the subject of this process of expressive creation of society, I mean expressive totality as we have already discussed. Okay, as being simply humanity would be both, both ahistorical as well as metaphysical. Because identifying the social creator with all of social humanity, even at a single point in time makes it difficult, if not impossible to point to the specific social locations of this creation. When I say ahistorical, which goes beyond time and space, when I say metaphysical, as I have already mentioned that um, metaphysical, I mean the proponents of metaphysics suggest that social change occurs because of the changes in natural forces of production. Okay? That is why uh, scientific stage, positivistic stage uh, differed. They said no, it is not simply uh, 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 social change cannot occur only because of natural changes, but also because of human action, human agency. Okay? That is why uh, in the proponents of metaphysics, the way they suggested that no, human beings only know how to contemplate on nature, human beings have no role to play in social change, whereas the scientific stage suggests that no, human beings know how to contemplate on nature, but not only contemplate on nature, but also how to control nature. Okay? In this sense, okay? that is why just like Marx, the proponents of western Marxism recognize that an, an abstract description of the subject of this process of the expressive totality as being simply humanity would be both ahistorical as well as metaphysical, would be both uh, which goes uh, beyond time and space as well as which is naturally mediated. Okay? Why? Because identifying the social creator with all of social humanity, even at a single point in time makes it difficult, if not impossible to point to the specific social locations of this creation. While all members of society are seen as, uh, as involved in this creation, because they are also involved with each other, they do not do so equally or, or consensually, except perhaps in a futuristic communist society, socialist society. Okay? Therefore, western Marxists argue that, that the social actor, the creative subject is not social humanity as a whole, but its parts in particular uh, social classes. Social classes then are placed at the center of the western Marxist theory of society. I mean, so what does it imply? 
it implies that social structure arises out of social conflicts okay unlike structuralists argument that social structure has ari arisen out of cooperation uh, complementarity and reciprocity of roles in the social division of labor not like okay i mean for western marxists social structures have arisen out of social conflict social struggles and so on okay this is true for the for the creation of institutions for the purpose of exploitation and domination okay uh, as it is for the creation of institutions by which the dominated and the exploited classes or institutions aim to overcome both domination and exploitation and attempt to create a new social order okay then then who are the who are the exploiting or dominating classes here for for western marxists or or just like marx okay they are the industrial organizations they are the market they are the state they are the uh, they are the, uh, religious institutions and so on okay and who are the who are the dominating uh, i mean who are the dominated or exploited classes in this context just like marx western marxists were also of the opinion that you see when when i when we refer to the dominated or exploited classes we refer to the working classes those who live on the basis of their labor power and the exploited and domin uh, and the and the exploiting and dominating classes are those who live off their labor they do not depend on their labor for their survival but the exploited and dominated classes they always depend on their labor for their survival okay and and this exploited and dominated class it always attempts to create a new social order okay which may explain why western marxists have traditionally generated both analysis of of the mechanisms of state domination cultural manipulation and so on and analysis of emancipatory power of action to resist and transcend such state domination cultural manipulation and so on okay this is very important okay one 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 not only attempts i mean western marxists not only attempt to understand to what extent and in what ways okay uh, various mechanisms of state domination cultural manipulation manufacturing of the consent as uh, uh, as mediated by by industrial organizations market the state religion and so on have arisen not only that but also they try to analyze the emancipatory power of human action to resist and transcend them emancipatory power of human action by the the dominated the subordinated the subjugated and the exploited classes okay they try to resist and and go beyond such such uh, state domination cultural manipulation and so on okay and therein how how does it happen it happens it happens when when there is a furtherance there is there is a shift from class in itself to class for itself okay when i say class in itself i mean that is the unorganized uh a political uh workforce whereas class for itself represents or refers to the organized intellectually and politically conscious uh working class or labor force okay in this context that intellectual and political consciousness when i say i i i, I refer to class consciousness or class organizes okay which is very important i want to make two points here okay the first is to remind you of marx's distinction between class in itself in other words class situations uh, as created by economic situations and and class for itself in other words a class as self creation of itself as a class through political organization and the development of class consciousness okay in in western marxism it is the class for itself which receives most attention because it is here that that the creative and and relational aspects of class can be seen most clear i mean 
what do I mean by this that that it is here that I mean it is in class for itself that that the creative and relational aspects of class can be seen most clearly. What do I imply here? What do I refer to? I refer to uh, the fact that that class organization and class culture are clearly creative and equally clearly at least in the case of the workers movements and they are not self sufficient, but are armed with conflict with the capitalist class. Okay. In this context, it is very important to mention the case of Alain Touraine. I mean, in France, the way he was trying to look at uh, the workers' movements, I mean, uh, Renault Corps movements, anti nuclear movements, and so on. Okay. For in, in, in indeed, the way uh, Alain Touraine argues, uh, he argues that, that there is no class without class consciousness. In other words, that that the concept of class is meaningless unless it is it relates to class uh, I mean social action or class action. Okay. If, if somebody suggests that uh, no, uh, no it is only when uh, class consciousness will be there okay, then, um, then people will carry out a social and political revolution for Turin. Okay. Theoretically speaking, conceptually speaking, practically speaking, okay, there is no class without class consciousness. How can you forge a class without forging class consciousness? Okay. I mean, the, 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 the concept of class loses its meaning okay, uh, if it is not related to uh, uh, social action, I mean class action. That is the first point. Okay. That is what I wanted to uh, go back a little bit, uh, uh, where Marx made a distinction between class in itself and class for itself. Okay. And, and secondly, Gramsci, particularly Gramsci, uh, develops these issues in his well known discussion on hegemony. I mean, these, these issues of class in itself, class for itself. I mean, the way Turin said, um, there is no class without class consciousness. Um, the, the concept of class is meaningless unless it relates to social action. The, the Gramsci develops these, these issues in, 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 um, uh, while dwelling upon um, the concept of hegemony. Okay. For, for Gramsci, I mean, I mean, the the essential point that that Gramsci makes is that the power of a ruling class does not reside simply in in its control of physical force. I mean, power does not simply come out of the barrel of a gun for for Gramsci. Simply, not. one can one can look at uh, different uh, state structures uh, in Germany and so on during at the time of Hitler. Uh, in Italy, Benito Mussolini and so on, uh, even in Indian case today. Okay. I mean, one of, if you, if you look at this, I mean, power often uh, uh, comes out of, of, of physical coercion. It is not simply that. What, what um, uh, Gramsci suggests, okay, that, that one of the central locations of, of such uh, exercise of power one of the central locations of conflict beside the workplace conflict and the conflict over control of the state is therefore, a cultural one. I mean cultural hegemony. Okay. What is that cultural hegemony? I mean, uh, it is the capitalist domination that also rests on a particular form of common sense, a particular form of everyday culture as well as what to academics are are the more obvious issues of the production of cultural commodities. Then you do not, you do not exercise your power through military alone, through economy alone, through market alone, okay. but you also exercise your power through religion, through culture, through food practices, through sanitation, through cultural habits and so on. Okay. The, this is uh, through, through your ideology and so on, through your politics and so on. That is what 
happened in it um, uh, in the case of uh, Benito Mussolini in Italy and Adolf Hitler in Germany and, and, and subsequently in other parts of the world. I am not uh, I'm just trying to give you a few examples. It, it does not imply that, that only these two countries uh, did that kind of um, uh, were engaged in this kind of thing. Okay. This is important. Okay. That is why uh, I do not tend to exercise my power, my control over you, I do not tend to exercise my power over other groups okay, only on the basis of military, only on the basis of state, only on the basis of uh, market, but also through religion, through culture, through caste, through race, through food habits, through uh, all sorts of culturally mediated practices. Okay. That is very important. In this context, in the context of this, this kind, that is why capitalist domination rests on a particular form of common sense, a particular form of everyday culture as well as what to academics are the more obvious issues of the production of cultural commodities. Okay. That is why if you look at the, the first Indian war of independence, often it is uh, often is it referred to um, the Sepoy mutiny just because of the, the, the kind of culturally mediated practices that, that both Hindus and Muslims had had them. Okay. Now, also uh, powers that be they also try to divide the people on the basis of this. Okay. This is what we want to interrogate in the context of modernist construct of, of our culture. Okay. The, the, that on, the, on the similar parlance, okay, the workers movements, okay, Gramsci argues need to work not just towards seizing power in the state and control of control the workplace, but also towards the creation of a new cultural hegemony. Does it imply that one cultural hegemony will be replaced by another cultural hegemony? What does it imply? I mean, I mean it implies transforming the way in which we think about the world, recreating culture in a new form with a new content. Okay. One, one example of what is meant by uh, this, this that, uh, that, uh, that creation of a uh, new cultural hegemony or, or, or you may say uh, recreating culture uh, uh, in a new form with a new content. Okay. What does it imply? I mean one example of what is meant by this can be seen in the Italian context, because Gramsci was born, I mean Gramsci was one of the founding members of the communist party of Italy uh, um, and he was also engaged in anti-imperialist movements in Italy on the uh, on account of which he had to be imprisoned uh, and he passed away in jail almost 13, 14 years, 1925 to 1938. I mean that new cultural hegemony or, or recreation of culture in a new form with a new content when Gramsci said, Gramsci argues that the, the, the peasants, the farming communities in particular of the south of the southern hemisphere in the underdeveloped countries in the, in the, in the satellites in, in, uh, in, the, in the developing and underdeveloped economies. Okay. The peasants in these countries accept the present order of things not so much out of the economic interest or because of repression, but because their everyday mode of social organization places them in a position of dependence on local notables and because of because their religious culture equally subordinates them. Religious culture you may say uh, today I can say in Indian context caste culture, uh, uh, tribal culture. Uh, I mean basically caste culture okay, equally subordinates them to the dominant social groups. In this context, the task of the workers movements uh, as, as Gramsci argues is to build a new alliance with the peasantry involving the transformation of their everyday modes of cultural and social organization. And for this reason, Gramsci played particulars, uh, I mean, I mean uh, for uh, and especially for this reason, Ramsey placed um, a particular emphasis on, on the development of what he called uh, 
organic intellectuals rather than traditional intellectuals. Okay. Traditional intellectuals, we, we always have seen that how um, traditional intellectuals are always found in universities, in academia and so on, in IITs and, and, and I mean academic institutions and so on. Okay. What Gramsci pointed out that if you want to change the world, then we do not require merely or uh, I mean uh, traditional intellectuals, but we, we require organic intellectuals. Okay. What does it imply? What does organic intellectuals, I mean what does this term on organic intellectuals refer to? I mean the growth of a new working class intelli intelligentsia, which would be able to speak to the working class, not just in terms of economic interest or political strategy, but also to draw on working class culture and language. Now, you see the way we have, we have made a shift in our modernist construal from, from economic uh, strategies and political strategies, economic interests and political tactics and strategies to, to working class culture and language, not simply culture and language, but also working class proletarian uh, uh, culture and language, marginalized cultures and languages. This is very important. That is why um, uh, in, the, in the context of class consciousness, class organization, uh, cultural, new cultural hegemony and so on, uh, Gramsci pointed out uh, the significance of organic intellectuals in the party building um, against imperialist expansion and so on. Okay. Thus, thus, thus Western Marxists, thus Western Marxism takes the consciousness of, of ordinary people. Okay. I mean, why why I am I am referring to knowledge and action, precisely because um, traditional intellectuals they always possess knowledge, okay. But organic intellectuals they not only possess knowledge but also know how to use that knowledge, apply that knowledge, how to uh, carry forward uh, social social and political revolution in terms of social action, okay, class action. That's why. We have put it, I mean the, the, the way uh, organic intellectuals are involved in not only producing knowledge, but also disseminating knowledge through social action, okay? through political action, through class action. In this way, Western Marxism takes the consciousness of ordinary people, working class culture and language, I mean their, their class identity, culture, language and so on as seriously as it does their activity. Indeed, it tends to argue that the two cannot be separated. Knowledge and action cannot be separated. Okay. That is why as, as, uh, as we have already discussed for today, there is no class without class consciousness. I mean the concept of class is meaningless unless it relates to social action. For Gramsci, the discussion on culture is at the same time a discussion on modes of social and political organization. That is why culture and on the one hand and social and political organizations cannot be separated, cannot be examined in isolation. Consistently, very logically, okay, Western Marxism does not believe in theorizing uh, as a pure activity or, or abstract philosophizing free of uh, all social relations is neither desirable nor possible. In both cases, the knowledge and action are seen as ultimately the same thing. For I mean, I mean, we do. I'm putting it succinctly that we do not act uh, without thinking, but our thought is itself related to practical activity. I mean, do we think without having any any uh, without having uh, uh, without giving any any serious thought to to practice? Okay. I mean, we do not act without thinking. We also, I mean, as I said, uh, we also do not think without practice, in, without taking part, uh, we do not think without taking practice into consideration. And similarly, we do not practice without taking thought into consideration. Okay? That is why we do not act without thinking, but our thought is itself related to practical activity. Okay? Whenever we are thinking, Okay. We are also thinking about practical activity, practice. Okay. Uh, 
and and particularly Antonio Gramsci expresses this point of view okay, in a number of famous aphorisms, uh, aphorisms uh, perhaps the most creative part of Gramsci's thinking on the subject is his redefinition of intellectual activity as including both theoretical and organizing activity. Okay. Uh, I mean uh, this of course, relates to intellectuals local notables such as the village doctor, the priest or the school teacher and the organizing and theoretical activity of civil servants or managers. Okay. That is why I said it is very important to understand, understand, um, uh, uh, understand how, how Gramsci tried to relate not just to communist party activists, but also to traditional intellectuals as well as the organizing and theoretical activity of civil servants or managers. Okay. That is the role of the of, of organic, uh, organic intellectuals uh, uh, in party building. Okay. In this way, western Marxists tried to dwell upon social movements okay, as a marker of as, a, as, as one of the hallmarks of uh, critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Now, we are going to discuss reflexivity and rationality okay, um, in the same pace. I mean, I mean, I mean when I say um, uh, reflexivity and rationality the way western Marxists suggested, I mean western Marxism can be can be described both cognitively and, and uh, normatively as a philosophy of praxis or, uh, or, the, theory, the, or the unity of thought and action. It is very important, I mean when I say cognitively, I refer to the process of knowledge production, the way to produce knowledge and, and the ways to produce knowledge and normatively as a philosophy of praxis. Praxis I mean practice, okay. I, mean, I mean normatively when I say what should be, what ought to be okay. and there the process of knowledge production and what ought to be, what should be, okay, there they must be united. There, that is why I said the unity of thought and action. Okay. That is the self creation, self knowledge and modernity, I mean histories. Okay. It is often asserted that, that this is what happens in everyday life. First and secondly, we should realize this and take it into uh, account, for example, when we are theorizing. However, there is obviously more to this issue th than that or it would not make sense to claim that the results of our thought and action appear to us as things external structures. In this way Gramsci for example, argues that while everyone is an intellectual in other words theorizes and organizes on an everyday level not everybody has the social function of an intellectual. In other words, not everyone devotes themselves to his to this thinking and organizing. In, in other words, the division of mental and uh, manual labor diagnosed by Marx and carried to its extreme in the Taylorist modes of model of production means that this initial unity is at the very uh, least severely distorted. Even Harry Braverman tried to tried to uh, in, in labor and monopoly capital, Harry Braverman also uh, 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 mentioned that, that the division of mental and manual labor, uh, okay. uh, I mean it, he, all, he also tried to look at this aspect. On a, on a more general level, the reality of class conflict and class culture implies that the social actors the conflicting class movements of the rulers and the ruled cannot fully grasp the social totality, but are restricted to a partial knowledge of it. Thus, the reason that we do not grasp the exp expressive totality of society as such is that the agent is not the whole of social humanity, but is in fact the conflicting parts of that humanity. Okay. It is very important. It then, it then comes to it then comes to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it, it, the, it then comes as no surprise to find that many Western Marxists 
expand Marx's own indications in this direction with a much stronger emphasis on the universal nature of the working class. In other words, the claim that the thinkers and organizers of the working class uh, movement can speak at least to an extent from the position of the future unalienated humanity. I mean, I, we have discussed this earlier in earlier lectures that the point that it this implies that valid knowledge of the social whole is only available in modern that is capitalist society. Uh, in other words, that sociology is from this perspective at least only possible from modernity. That this implies a double emphasis on reflexivity here. I mean, what kind of reflexivity? I mean, the reflexivity available to a class movement and the reflexivity implied by the theorists need to become involved in that movement. For example, I mean for, for Turin, incidentally this, this involvement of this, uh, I mean the involvement of with this movement um, uh, has a rather uh, different form which is, which is uh, developed extensively in the second part of the voice and the eye. Okay. I want to mention briefly the idiosyncratic uh, direction in which Turin develops this line of reason. Turin does not in fact share Lukacs or Gramsci's conviction that industrial capitalism is the last stage of social conflict. Okay. Instead, he draws Turin draws a distinction between industrial and post industrial society which is not identical with the usual technological determinism although it does tend to subordinate capitalism to modernity rather than treating modernity as essentially capitalist as more orthodox Marxists do and I, and I do believe Turin does not claim to be a Marxist in, in this traditional sense. When what, what Turin argues is that uh, societies can be defined in terms, terms of their historicity. Okay. That is why I have mentioned self creation, self knowledge and modernity historicity. Okay. What is that historicity? I mean that is um, I mean, I mean society's capacity to act on themselves. In other words, the, the extent of self creation, self knowledge uh, is not fixed, but variable. They are not given, they are not fixed, they are not natural, they are, they are variable, they are dynamic. I mean structuring or institutionalized agency okay, in the limited sense of the repetitive reproduction of a single method of self creation can thus have a uh, greater weight uh, than original and creative agency. Industrial society already distinguishes itself from earlier societies in terms of its greater historicity, its greater capacity for self knowledge and self creation as opposed to self reproduction. I mean post industrial or programmed society towards which we are moving is radically self knowing, not only self knowing, but also self creating. Okay. That consists of economic accumulation and the capacity it bestows to create work, the forms of knowledge which produce the social and the cultural model uh, which represents the ways in which a society thinks of itself. Again by contrast with Gramsci as well as Lukacs, Turin distinguishes um, between this cultural model and ideology. Okay. When I say cultural model, model, I mean the overall self knowledge of society on the one hand, culture on the one hand and ideology on the other, which Gramsci, uh, 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 sorry, which, which Turin, Alain Turin restricts to the articulation of group interests okay, uh, as defined in, uh, in this cultural model. Thus, if, if, if group interests uh, are defined as economic by a cultural model that sees society as primarily an economic reality. Okay. Ideologies will also articulate particular uh, economic interests, but the definition of reality as economic is itself a cultural one. This global cultural model though is not imposed on the actors from outside, instead it consists in and only in the in the issues and forms of the conflict between the opposing social movements and and in this way 
if the cultural model of industrial society uh, uh, examines society uh, as a as an economic reality uh, then this is because of the economic reductionism of of the ruling class i mean economism of the of the ruling class and of the working class and not vice versa thus turin is to an extent following both uh, earlier western marxists and the founders of critical modernism in arguing that uh, modernity i mean post post industrial in his terms i mean post industrial or programmed society is characterized by its greater reflexivity it should be noted in uh, in this context that turin argues that the key conflict in such post industrial or programmed society okay is not between owners and workers but between the dominated and the dominating between the victims and the operators of the power structure okay it's very important i mean within the power, within the workers you will find the dominant and, and dominated forces it's very important okay the last point that i that i want to make is to draw your attention in this lecture to what all of this means for the uh, grounding of truth claims knowledge claims all three authors namely lukacs gramsci and turin are radical in their refusal of transcendence in other words of philosophies which claim to be able to look at truth somewhere rather than other than in human society as it develops historically it implies rejecting cognitive and normative claims based not just on a transcendental god but also those claims based on supposedly human um, na universal human nature or on claims about external nature it is argued alternatively that these do not exist um or that we cannot know them except in historical and social reality as I, we have already discussed that the argument about nature is not completely watertight that we not only contemplate on nature but also control nature we just cannot say that no we only contemplate on nature or we can only say that no we only control nature that's not correct okay okay that's why our argument about the argument about nature is not absolutely uh, completely watertight they cannot be uh, examined in uh, they cannot be treated as uh, watertight compartments and we'll return to these issues uh, both in terms of what might be argued to be universal biological needs and in terms of the possibility of thinking about human nature as having a universal social component and particularly uh, a communicative one if we if we accept the western marxist argument however and the arguments in its favor are at least as good as arguments in favor of for example structuralism or post structuralism we have to take a position of what what gramsci calls absolute historicism what is absolute historicism i mean claims about truth or the god can only be evaluated in terms of knowable historical and social reality more than this what is true and what is good are historical and social rather than philosophical questions this does not imply a total relativism or a pure anything goes approach for at least two reasons firstly within any given society it can be argued as as turin does uh, that these claims need to be referred to the highest level of meanings available in that society in other words to its overall cultural model rather than to the ideologies of any particular group within that society and secondly nevertheless okay what might be more in keeping with lukacs and gramsci's thinking although as far as i know they do not pursue this line of thought but but just to just for the sake of argument okay would be to argue that just as genuine self knowledge is only available from the second last social formation from the point of view of that proletariat which will become the universal subject of the new society so it is a mistake to think of pre capitalist societies or even capitalist society as a fixed or static form i mean they are all dynamic they are not fixed or given all historical societies in other words are uh, in change and in transition and all historical societies contain social conflicts 
which point to new forms of society, which would then open up the possibility of an evaluation okay, of claims about truth and value in terms not of overall uh, cultural models, but in terms of those ideologies which are prefiguring and leading and in particular uh, could only be related to the provisional ideologies um, uh, of our own time. It might plausibly be argued that this is what in fact happens. Okay? Then, then in these two lectures in the 15th and 16th lectures, I mean the last and today's lecture, what we have discussed very quickly we will cover and then we will move to the next module. Uh, we have discussed uh, western Marxist um, uh, theoretical trajectory of modernity, I mean society as a human creation. Uh, in this we have discussed uh, Lukacs, Gramsci and Turin's works, how they have contributed to, to the debates on critical modernist paradigm in sociology. Okay. And there is always a common thread of involvement with social movements among these three workers, three, or three authors. Okay, and there is a sense of there is a tendency of refusal to separate theory from practice. Okay, and we have discussed Western Marxism, um, uh, or we have, in other words, we have discussed the contributions of Lukacs, Gramsci, and Turin. Okay, against the backdrop of four critical four central pillars of modernity, namely holism or totality, um, uh, uh, reflexivity, rationality, and social movements. In the, in the concept of social totality or, or, or holism, we have discussed uh, the distinction between the relationship as well as the distinction between um, western Marxism and structuralism. Then we have discussed reification and alienation. Okay. Then we have discussed expressive totality. Okay. In this, in today's lecture particularly we have discussed social, we started with social movements. Okay. Uh, within social movements, we have discussed consciousness and action, I mean human agency, class agency and class conflicts, then class consciousness, class organization and hegemony okay. uh, and then we moved on to uh, knowledge and action and then we moved on to, uh, on to reflexivity and rationality, I mean the self creation, self knowledge and modernity, I mean historicity okay. and then we have discussed absolute historicity. Okay. From in the next lecture, what we are going to do, we are going to come to the next module. Okay, I mean the 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 fifth module. I mean synthesizing modernity uh, uh, with social theory. Okay, in the works of Immanuel Wallerstein, uh, Anthony Giddens, uh, and Jürgen Habermas. Okay, and it's very important to 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 look at. These, uh, these three uh, authors, I mean Wallerstein, Giddens and Habermas, how to synthesize modernity and social theory. Thank you.